This is a video about congenital uterine anomalies. My name is Dr Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. When talking about uterine shape, it's very important to look for this in every scan. A congenitally abnormal uterus can be associated with subfertility, an increased risk of miscarriage and premature delivery and its consequences. Normally we look at the uterus in a 2D view. And as you can see in this image, the fundus is here, anterior surface here, cervix, posterior surface, and back to the fundus. And this is the endometrial cavity. This is a normal longitudinal view of the uterus. This is a transverse view of the uterus with the patient's right on this side and the patient's left on this side. When scanning the uterus, we always do a systematic scan from one cornu to the other in the longitudinal plane and then from the cervix up to the fundus in the transverse plane, or the other way round if you prefer. The problem in the 2D transverse view is that if you see separation of the endometrial cavity, that it's very difficult now to distinguish on 2D between an arcuate, a subseptate and a septate uterus. This uterus was in fact subseptate. The answer lies in the coronal view, which is seen on 3D. This distinguishes between the various congenital uterine anomalies. In this image here, this purple plane is the coronal plane. It separates the body into an anterior and a posterior half. How to get a good coronal view? The best time to scan a patient is in the luteal phase, because then you get a good contrast between the endometrium and the myometrium. Scanning transvaginally or occasionally transrectally, you would take a 3D volume of the uterus and then look at the coronal view in sectional planes or render the volume and then look at the coronal view. On a transabdominal scan, you sometimes see the coronal view on 2D in an axial uterus in the longitudinal plane. There are various classification systems for congenitally abnormal uteruses, and I prefer this one. Published in 2003 by Mr. Salim, this is an excellent, uh, easy to understand and very reproducible classification system. If you pause the video here, you'll be able to have a good read of this chart. This is a representation of the range of abnormalities described in the paper, from a normal uterus to an arcuate uterus, subseptate, septate, bicornuate, didelphus, and unicornuate. And we'll go through them one by one. This is a normal uterine shape in the coronal view on 3D. It has a convex outer myometrial contour. You are allowed to have a 10 millimeter dip and still call it normal. A flat inner fundal endometrial contour. A triangular endometrial cavity. And two interstitial portions of the fallopian tube, just there. This is an arcuate uterus. Again, it's a convex outer myometrial contour with a 10 millimeter dip allowed. An indented inner endometrial contour with an angle here of more than 90 degrees. There's 90 degrees and you can clearly see this is more than 90 degrees. A vaguely triangular endometrial cavity and two interstitial portions of the fallopian tube. A subseptate uterus, again a convex outer myometrial contour with a 10 millimeter dip allowed, an indented inner endometrial contour with an angle or here of less than 90 degrees. There's 90 degrees and you can see this is less than 90. This septum does not extend to the cervix and there are two upper endometrial cavities two interstitial portions of the fallopian tube. In a septate uterus, again, convex outer myometrial contour, an indented inner endometrial contour with the angle here less than 90 degrees. 
The septum now extends to the cervix. And there are two endometrial cavities, two interstitial portions of the fallopian tube. In a bicornuate uterus, you have a concave outer myometrial contour with a more than 10 millimeter dip. You measure that by drawing a horizontal line between the two interstitial portions of the fallopian tube and then measure down to the dip here. So if this is more than 10 millimeters, it's a bicornuate uterus. An indented inner endometrial contour, two endometrial cavities, two interstitial portions of the fallopian tube, And then this is a uterus didelphus. Two separate uteri, often visible in different planes, and they're often better seen on 2D than 3D. Two endometrial cavities, there's one here and one here. Two cervices, they can be in one body or they can be slightly separate. And two interstitial portions of the fallopian tubes. This is a unicornuate uterus. It is one endometrial cavity that is vaguely banana shaped, one interstitial portion of the fallopian tube, with or without a rudimentary horn, with or without a communication to the main endometrial cavity. A single cervix. You can have a combination of abnormalities. You can have one or two cervical canals in one cervical body or two separate cervices. There can also be a vaginal septum, particularly in a septate uterus. This can be longitudinal and or transverse. It can be complete or incomplete. And if it causes obstruction, it causes a hematocolpus and or a hematometra. Always scan the kidneys because there can be associated renal abnormalities. Here are some examples of what these uteri look like on 3D. This is a normal uterus seen on 3D. A nice myometrial contour, a flat cavity, and two interstitial portions of the fallopian tube, cavity going down to a single cervix. In the arcuate uterus, you've still got a nice convex uh, external contour, but here you've got um, a little dip of 15 millimeters but mostly import this is more than 90 degrees. So this is an arcuate uterus. Here again you've got a nice concave myometrial contour and here you can see myometrium extending down and this angle is less than 90 degrees so it's either septate or septate and this does not reach the cervix so it's subseptate. And the length of this septum measured this way is 26 millimeters. Here is a septate uterus, again a convex outer myometrial contour, a septum that in this case extends all the way down to the cervix, two endometrial cavities, two cervical canals, two interstitial portions of the fallopian tube. You can see how that septum goes right the way down the cervix. This is a 3D volume centered on the cervix. This is a bicornuate uterus. Again, you can see the two endometrial cavities, but now we've got a deep dip in the outer myometrial contour. This is a bicornuate uterus. This is more than 10 millimeters. A uterus didelphus is very difficult to image uh, on 3D because it's a uterus with two uterine horns and they're often in different planes, a little bit like bunny ears. So this is one uterus, this is the cervical body, and this is the other uterus. On 2D you will see um, on, on transvaginal scanning two horns in different planes. This is the right horn and this is the left horn. Try and have a look at the cervix because in the transverse plane, here I could see the endometrial cavity going through its own cervical canal 
and here an endometrial cavity and its own cervical canal. And this could be two separate services or it could be um, two canals in one body. A unicorn uterus is really easy to miss. On 2D longitudinal view, anterior wall, fundus, posterior wall, cervix, cervical canal and into the endometrial cavity. It looks entirely normal so far. In the transverse view, what you tend to notice is that either the width is a bit narrower than, than uh, it often is, but here this is a normal width, but mainly that the endometrial cavity tends to be fairly circular. It does not widen into that nice long stripe that you normally see on a transverse plane. Circular endometrial cavity. And when you render that on 3D, you can clearly see this is one cavity going up to a single um, per, per interstitial portion of the fallopian tube. When you see a unicorn uterus, do look for a rudimentary horn. Here we could see a, a unicorn uterus, and then there was a connection to this 15 by 15 millimeter lesion, which on 3D clearly had a little bit of endometrium in it. So this was a non communicating rudimentary horn with a unicorn uterus. So, examine the uterus carefully in 2D. Does the endometrial cavity separate near the fundus? That would suggest an arcuate, subseptate, septate or bicornuate uterus. Is the endometrial cavity circular? This suggests a unicornuate uterus. Can you find a second uterus? This suggests didelphus or a small rudimentary horn if the uterus is unicornuate. Apply 3D and take a volume, preferably in the luteal phase. Obtain a coronal view and categorise the abnormality. Ensure your clinical colleagues are aware of which classification system you use. Thank you.